One of my favourite artists is John William Waterhouse. He was an English painter who adapted the pre-Raphaelite principles of the mid-1800s, embracing romance, poetry and medieval culture. I just love everything about his artwork and find myself swept up in the romance of each of his settings. I just love his paintings and almost wish myself into them. The best I can do is to study his works and recreate my own impressions of his wonderful old master. So I'm studying Boreas, which he painted in 1903. The watercolours I've used are Davies Grey, Caroline Green, Olive Green, Mineral Violet, Windsor Yellow, Potter's Pink, Indigo Blue, French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. This is the first time I've attempted to paint a John William Waterhouse coffee in watercolour. Um, I'm really enjoying the process. I've been painting this lady now for a few weeks on and off and I'm just learning so much about colour, muted colour, broken colour, different effects with watercolour that I'm not usually used to doing. What I'm doing now is glazing a watery wash of the French ultramarine over the darks of her shawl. The actual colours I used in her shawl are the French ultramarine, the potter's pink and the mineral violet. I did actually include Windsor yellow to desaturate the mineral violet as I found that it was a bit too saturated, a bit too bright. It's one of the things I've found by studying Waterhouse is the lovely mixture of broken muted colours that he uses. He seems to build the layers with these colours so they dance around each other in a beautiful harmony. I really have tried to, tried to capture this in watercolour by painting with these techniques. So I've used wet into wet and wet into dry. I've tried not to blend the colour as much as I usually do and I've found by brushing in on dry paper I can create the broken colour effect which is rather impressionistic. I really love the effect that it gives and um, I've found just by studying Waterhouse it's teaching me so much. When I first started to paint I tended to use a lot of saturated colour. My paintings just didn't look realistic, they looked rather amateurish. After some study and understanding of colour theory I discovered how to mute my colours. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding Windsor Violet with the French Ultramarine. I'm wanting to mix up a really nice dark to paint the creases in her shawl. So I'm going to test this out on a piece of card just to see how it looks. And it's a little bit too bright for what I'm wanting. So I'm taking some of the Windsor Yellow. As you can see, it's desaturated the colour. Windsor Yellow is a complementary colour to Windsor Violet. By adding a complementary colour, it will always desaturate. So now I've got this really nice muted dark and I can paint it into the creases of her shawl, emphasising those creases and it's going to push the shawl back. It's not going to be a bright purple blue it's going to be lovely muted dark that's pushing back into those creases if you find your painting and your colors are too bright go and get yourself a color wheel and the colors opposing each other on the color wheel they are the complementary colors and when you add them together they will desaturate each other it's a great practice if you can get some scrap paper and your colours and just have a play. You can come up with some really beautiful muted darks and here I'm adding even more of the Windsor Yellow and coming up with some nice really lovely darks so I can add them into my painting as well.
I've decided to add some permanent rose. I just think it needs a little bit of brightening up and this soft pink is the perfect colour to use. Especially over her arm, it sort of indicates maybe that the shawl is transparent. I don't think it is, but it just gives a really, really nice effect, which I think is really pretty. The greens I'm using in this painting is Davies Grey, Perylene Green and Olive Green. I chose these colours because they have nice muted qualities about them and that's the feel that I want for this painting. I'm actually going to mix French Ultramarine with the Perylene Green. It's going to give me a really nice beautiful deep dark colour the tonal values in the grass. When I study Waterhouse paintings and the fields that he paints, they're rather abstract and to create that feel, that impressionistic abstract feel in watercolour is something that I'm not used to doing because I've always been such a realist in my paintings. So it's been a real challenge for me but I'm really enjoying this. So in the grass, I sort of want to incorporate all the colours in the palette, not just the green. I want to bring in some of the yellows, some of the blues, and some of that beautiful potter's pink, which I have used for the dried grass. So I'm using my brush strokes, just wet into dry, and just brushing in the grass in that way. I might come over with a bit of wet water and wash over what I've painted just to create some soft edges here and there. Thank you for watching my process of what's on my easel. I'm still yet to finish this lovely lady. If you have enjoyed watching, please like, share and follow my channel. I will be uploading a tutorial soon on painting the nose. Um, I just really love painting portraits and I thought it'd be a great idea just to study different facial features. So painting the nose is my next painting tutorial. If you would like to see more of this Waterhouse study, you'll find me on Instagram at Nettie Kozlowski and I will be posting this beautiful lady there when I have finished her. Thanks guys, see you next time. Bye!